Welcome back to the Very Woke Podcast. Welcome to the new year, episode 28. Yes, and I still have my Christmas tree up. <laughs> Wes is one of those people who has a Christmas tree up until March. And yeah, takes it down. we'll see what, we'll see what it, it takes is. Takes it down. Bro. But anyways, we want to ask you guys, how was your, how was your holiday? You know, did you get everything you wanted? Ready for the new year? All that. Yep, let us know in the comments below if you got what you asked for. Uh, and what your predictions are for uh, this year. Do you think uh, we're going to be... Uh, back into normal with uh, COVID free with this new um, uh, vaccine coming out. Yeah, um, I'm not getting the vaccine until later on this year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's going to be one of those things to test me. But let us know in the comments below what your thoughts on on that. Um, today's topic, I feel like we're going to jump into uh, what Jeremy and I know a decent amount about. Not too much, but a decent amount. Uh, and allows you guys in the comments below that do know a little bit more than us to express your opinions and what do you think it's going to look like but today we're going to be talking about stocks and cryptocurrencies oh. um jeremy knows a lot about stocks he reads, reads books and stuff and i know a lot about cryptocurrencies so yeah how do you know about cryptocurrency was how do i know about cryptocurrency? yeah you, you don't want to just say i know i read a lot of books on it was, yeah i know a lot know. about it because uh i started following uh bitcoin back in 2012 um and uh, I didn't invest, and that was a dumbass mistake of me. <laughs> and um, but there's some new cryptocurrencies coming out uh, now that I look that look promising. Um, some a little different than others, and uh, expectations are a little bit different than Bitcoin. But um, we'll get into that. Uh, I think first thing to start off with though is stocks, because uh, I feel like a majority of people understand stocks a little yeah. bit better. Yeah, they, they understand it. Well, they have a general idea of what it is, because mm -hmm. you know everyone's like, oh, the stock market stuff. That means the economy is doing good. Yeah. And it was like, it doesn't really mean that, but... That's, that's fair. That's fair. Um, how do you think, um, like, let's say you have, like, a beginner. Like, let's say I, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about um, how to invest in stocks. I don't know anything about, like, how to read companies. What would you suggest for people, either book-wise or video-wise or just knowledge-wise, of how they can start investing into the stock? I think first things first is, like, look at YouTube videos because, you know... Or you could go do some Skillshare about that. Because I did, I took a Skillshare class, and it was like an introductory course about it. And it just gave us like a basic overview of like what a stock is. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, it's this, and then how you get money from it, and all that. And then what like suggested apps you could probably use. That's the first route I did. And then it, when you, if you are a little bit more interested, then you can start reading books into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, books like you can read The Intelligent Investor, you know, One Up on Wall Street. And then a random, uh, random walk on Wall Street to help you get knowledge based on that. Isn't an intelligent investor also a real estate uh, book too? Yeah, because I know the guy who wrote it is he's Benjamin. also yeah. Yeah, but I think he's geared towards more stocks and stuff like that. Is he? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um. That's what you should probably do if you're a beginner though. Like, yeah. Look at you some YouTube videos, maybe some classes on Skillshare if you have that. But and then if you do like what you see, then yeah, do a little. You can start do a little bit more research. What do you uh, What do you think the beginner should um, look for when investing in stocks? Like, is it like should they start looking on like day trading, or should they look like long term investments, or should they have a kind of what kind of portfolio should they acquire beginning? Because I know a lot of people go. Oh Tesla, let me just dump all my money in there, <laughs> and it's like it's playing the iffy game. So, what kind of advice do you have for I think somebody who's starting out like that? Probably. Hmm. I think for me, it depends. For me, probably I'll go with the long term, just so like you could uh, see your money grow over time. Because, and besides, it helps you be emotionally. Helps you emotional, emotional wise. Because mm -hmm. remember, I think back then I told you when I first got into it, how like I started losing like money and stuff like that, and I was like super fucking scared and shit. Mm -hmm. And then everyone told, around me was just like, "Oh, chill the fuck out, dude. You're gonna be fine. Just yeah. wait it out." And then I waited out. And now I'm up like five hundred, almost six hundred dollars now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's one of those things that like. Like, for example, I have a problem because I invest in a cryptocurrency. Like I said, we'll get into that. But watching the crypto go up and down, it's nerve-wracking. It right? is, it is nerve-wracking. Nerve um, but, it's like, you have to understand that eventually it will go up. There is times where it comes down, but there is times where it goes back up. Normally, it's going to be on an increase unless you're buying into a company that has shit as, like, just they, a foundation. You know? Yeah, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, so, I mean... You just gotta look at the the brighter side, and obviously, like invest what you can. 
Mm-hmm. Um, when I'm testing out stocks and stuff, I invest $100. Um, just because to me, $100 isn't really anything. Oh, wow. Wes is rich, everyone. No, it's not. Wes no, is r- Wes some is people rich. invest like thousands of dollars <laughs> to test a stock out, right? <laughs> not me. I'm only investing 100 which I feel like 100 is like a, a base thing to do, right? Because mm-hmm. you're going to see like, is this stock actually going up? Because like, on $10, you're going to see like, a few cents. And it's not going to get you hyped. On 100 you're going to see a few dollars. And you're like, <laughs> okay, okay, I, I like this, right? So um, the whole point of it is like invest what you can. There's no like there's people out there go like, you need to invest five hundred dollars. You need to invest like no you need to invest what you can. And, and yeah, I think as well as like invest what you're willing to lose too. Right, right, a hundred percent. Get a get a um, um, an app or a brokerage that's going to allow you to uh, invest in a portions of stocks, not full stocks, because mm-hmm. that helps a lot, right? Because like right now, let's say if you want to buy Tesla. Full stock is like almost seven hundred dollars. Oh, seven hundred is not three hundred anymore. No. Oh wow. Yeah. I don't pay attention to them enough. Yeah, I invested in stock uh, Tesla, and we're doing good. <laughs> we're doing good. Um, but uh, you can d- download an app like Robinhood, or you can invest on the Cash App, um, to um buy portions of them, which I suggest doing for especially for a beginner. Um, and then once you understand more, you can get like other apps like Webull and stuff where you buy full portions, and usually those apps give you more, um like knowledge on the stock and like what's mm-hmm. selling what's not yeah. and stuff like that so keep that in mind uh and also you can put a buy-in limit so if someone's selling a stock for half the price you could put your you buy when someone puts that at half price which is like crazy but that's more for advanced users i feel like mm-hmm. um but yeah okay yeah stocks are stocks are good there's tons there's thousands millions of stocks that you can choose from um and definitely, like Jeremy said, like reading up on your stuff for sure. Because Jeremy has a lot of books and stocks and stuff. Um, <laughs> I have books and as well. Like I think the app I'm using right now is linked to Chase. It's mm-hmm. called You Invest. Yeah. And well, it'd be like, oh, you could look what's on. You could look at the portfolio and stuff like that. And like, hey, here's some news about it too, just so you can like be informed about what's what's going on. That's fair. With the company, which is really helpful. Yeah, you could be like, you could be like Jeremy only have one app. Or you could be like me, and I have three apps. I have Weeble. I have the Cash App, which I buy stocks on, and I also have Robinhood, which I do with cryptocurrencies. And he says I'm the crazy one. <laughs> I just like I like having options. I've, if one thing goes down, I have another thing to lean on. It's more like I my portfolio on apps is crazy. Um, but yeah, okay, I like that. Um, you have any other um, advice or tips or anything like that you want to share? I mean, not really. No? Not really. It's kind of a... Uh, kind of short, sweet, and temper. Yeah. Do you want to... Uh, when we put the video on YouTube, you want to link some things that maybe you've watched that have helped you and people yeah, can go to? Probably. I'll have to look some up. But like, it's on. But the thing that really helped me a lot was Skillshare. Yeah. But I don't know if like, I could probably link that down there because I think you have a, uh, a subscription. Yeah, it is that. a subscription base. I think you get like seven day free trial or something like that when you do it. We don't. We're not sponsored by Skillshare. Sure, sure. We we broke. Yeah, we broke. But we broke out here. Um, we want to give you guys tools that we actually use that we don't get any profit from because it's actually a good. Thing. I like Skillshare for many things. Like mm-hmm. it's not just like stocks. Are obviously good, but if you're trying to get graphic design or you're trying to do anything in a profession, they're probably going to have it on there. And they they teach way better than they go more in depth than YouTube videos, um, which I think you should definitely check out. Um, but that's it for stocks. That's all you got. For the most part, yeah. It's just like, for me, my point of view is just like, I use it more for a waiting game. I know some people do the day trading and stuff like that, but I don't recommend that because you got to be on your toes Mm -hmm. like Mm 24-7, even off the clock because like stocks do trade like off the clock because usually it happens, I think, at 9.30 and ends at 40, ends at 4. So yeah, they have better hours than we do. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. And like millions of dollars being traded, but yeah, day trading is just like y'all be on your toes. You gotta be precise and everything like that, or else you're gonna lose millions, and then like you're gonna lose your money, and then you're gonna be pissed off. Yeah, day trading I like to view as like gambling. It is gambling, pretty much. Yeah, because you're gambling. Oh, like this is gonna happen. It's gonna go up, or uh-huh. like if there's something, fuck, if something goes wrong, then you lose like all your money and shit. Yeah. So if you go on a day trade, definitely read up a lot before you read start up doing it. A lot. It. Know what the hell you're doing. Don't invest thousands of dollars into it and then expect to win because you could lose the thousands of dollars mm-hmm. when you're playing the waiting game. Like when I invest in things, I'm looking at it as like, okay, this is my, this is going to be my retirement. When I'm retired, this is what I'm going to take out. Um, 
and I like to run numbers and stuff, but like this is all fictional stuff. It's just a get you hyped. And once you once you invest your first and you make profit, you're gonna get addicted to it. And it's actually nice to have because you're literally like, I just bought this stock and I didn't do anything to it, and I'm making money. Mm -hmm. You it's have weird. yep, you have your money work for you. Yeah, it kind of feels illegal, you know, because like you're not working for it. It's like what the fuck's happening? It, it feels illegal, but it's like a good like you feel like a rebel. Um, but on the cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrency. So, so there's a new cryptocurrency out right now. Not new, but it's going up. Um, it's called Dogecoin. Dogecoin? Uh, and if you know what Doge is, it's, What's a, Doge? it's a dog meme that's all over the internet. Um, have you ever seen it? I think you showed me once, but it was a long time ago. Yeah, so Doge is just a, uh, it's a, it's a meme dog. It like, the dog looks surprised, uh, and it was just a giant meme that's been going around. But they made a cryptocurrency out of it. It's called Dogecoin. Um, right now, uh, I've watched it go from a fourth of a cent all the way up to a cent within a day, which if none of you guys understand what that is, that is a huge fucking profit, a huge profit off of a fourth of a cent up to a cent. That's more than doubling your profit, whatever you put in there. Right. So I invested into it when it was a ninth of a cent and now it's above, I think one and a half. Like we have one and I think cent. yeah, when your snap was just like a cent. Yeah, it's a cent. Yeah. I have right now. I bought a hundred dollars worth of it. I have well, not really. I bought ninety because Robinhood was like, a you, you can't invest a hundred percent of this until your bank approves of it. So we'll give you ninety percent. So invest ninety percent of what you have. So I invested ninety in there. So I have ninety one hundred shares of this coin. Okay. Now if this coin hits one dollar, just one dollar. I make $9,000. And I think everyone who's listening should definitely consider this, okay? The only thing that is different about this coin, unlike Bitcoin, Bitcoin has a limit, okay? And that's how I base the market price, right? It's like through past or past 3,000. Mm hmm. Yeah. My red. Yeah. So when it's surpassed 3,000, it goes up, right? Dogecoin doesn't have a limit. So it would be really hard to past bitcoin just because it doesn't have that limit to measure when the stock when the crypto goes up in price right so um right now it's a kind of playing if game if it gets above uh let's say five dollars that that crypto will be worth more than amazon which in retrospect doesn't seem possible right that's a lot so i suggest right now if you're looking to quite make some quick cash or whatever not like quick but like if you're looking to make some money Invest into the stock, wait for it to go up to 25 cents, and then possibly sell. Basically, buy it and then leave it alone. Just forget about it for about a month. Yeah, about a month. And then once it hits 25, like keep up, like don't leave the app alone, but watch because there's a Reddit page for it. And just watch Reddit and see what they're doing. Um, because once it hits 25 cents, if you buy now, right, you make a lot of money. Like you make a lot of money no matter what. Off a $100 investment, you have potential to make at least a thousand, right? That's a lot of money for a quick turnaround in a month, right? Mm -hmm. So definitely keep your eyes on that. Uh, and there's some other cryptocurrencies that are out that I haven't really paid much attention to. But Bitcoin literally just, I looked at it this morning, it surpassed $33,000 from a Bitcoin. That's fucking insane, dude. That is crazy. So um, look at other cryptos because everyone's going to look at these cryptos, this, this Bitcoin, and go, wow, that's a lot of money. Where else can I put my money at that's going to make me more profit? So we need to look at other cryptocurrencies that have potentials to become the next Bitcoin, which it's possible, 100%, right? Um, so uh, definitely look at that. And crypto, I feel like, is the best place to make money faster than stocks. Stocks is more like overtime kind of thing, which I still suggest doing because you're going to need that for retirement. But if you're looking for like quick profit to maybe reinvest into the stock market, definitely consider cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies has a lot to do with hypeness, uh, and if you have a lot of people buying, the prices are going to go up more. So if we can, if we as buyers or investors into cryptocurrencies can get the awareness out on like these currencies, the higher the price goes up. Like Keemstar, for example, you know who Keemstar is? Mm -hmm. He talks about Dogecoin. He's been talking about it for like the past week now, and the price has gone up. So if we get more influencers and more people to talk about, more people to buy into it, it's going to help us out by going up more. So, and I like cryptocurrency too because it's a non-traceable kind of money and it makes money for you. So you can use your, your, your coins to go buy stuff normally that people who accept it, right? And if you own a business, 
and you want your coin to go up, the best thing to do is to allow people to pay with that coin. Mm-hmm. It's going to bring more awareness. Um, and I think that uh, like cryptocurrency is obviously harder to read. But if you have any association with the internet, it should be pretty easy to read. You have forms. Just, yeah, I just got to look for it. Yeah, you got to look for it. It's like a stock, basically. But it's harder to read because, you know, Bitcoin is not going to release the next iPhone. So you can't really measure on that. But you can see how many people are talking about Bitcoin, how many people are investing in Bitcoin. That's going to really do based on how much Bitcoin goes up, how much Bitcoin is down. Because in this kind of cryptocurrency, the market, if it crashes, if it goes down in the Bitcoin, oh, in, uh, the cryptocurrency, it's highly based off people getting scared and selling quickly. Um, but those of us who don't sell immediately are going to have benefit. Look at Bitcoin, right? When it went up to 19000 everybody sold their shit. But if everyone kept their shit, even though they invested on 19000 they'd still be worth a lot of money right now because they had a almost they're about to have a fucking hundred percent profit gain mm-hmm. off this which is going it would be crazy right i invested a hundred dollars into bitcoin was eleven eleven thousand dollars and i fucking sold it <laughs> and i'm pissed but it's okay it's okay you live and you learn yes you live and you learn and now you have to learn how to hold learn how to hold and when to sell yeah i usually i just forget about it i have it and yeah. i'm just like that's my benefit right there right but like learning how to hold and when to sell when to sell i think is more important than how to hold because you can hold forever dude you can literally hold forever learning when to sell is as important especially when you're dealing with like regular companies like if apple releases another iphone next year they are and and if they fucking do shit and they're not innovating like they promised they would that's going to do bad for the stock right bad i think yeah it all goes well yeah i think it's pretty much i think when to sell should be a factor right so Learning when to sell, keeping up to date on these companies. Um, there's like news um, things that you can get sent to your email every day that tells you how stocks are doing. It, if you, that uh, interests you, you can do that too. Um, but like learning when to sell and when to hold is it is very, 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 very important when you're dealing with investments of this sort. Um, so just keep that in mind. And also going into 2021, um, I know <laughs> I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna no. say 2020. And going into 2021, like. Think about investing because this could be the year that changes a lot, especially in the technology era. This 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 technology area is going to be highly profitable because everybody is staying inside. So try to find companies that are innovating that area. Microsoft. <laughs> Microsoft is okay, uh, but like m- like look at things that people like. If you look at a product of a company and go, "Wow, that's going to change shit," see if they have a stock. And be an early investor. Try to get up on these things. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I think that's good. I think that's uh, that's basically where we wanted to get to today. Basically. Did you have anything else to say about stocks? I have, I have something else just, I want to mention today. What? Episode 5 and pizza, bitch. Yeah, we're doing that today. Yeah. Literally, we got pizza. We got to go pick it up right now. Nah. All right. <laughs> I've, been, I've been complaining about this man. To this man. Now, I want to watch Star Wars Episode 5. And I want to eat pizza as well. And he's I'm not making, kidding. I am making this a new Netflix and chill. Bro. For us. This he's been new... complaining about it every single I will day. send this man Snapchat emojis of what I want. And, he get, and guess what his dumb ass does? He ignores me. <laughs> I feel ignored. <laughs> I feel unloved. <laughs> like I snapped him. I was like, episode five and pizza. No response for seven fucking hours. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I hope you guys have a wonderful New Year's, <laughs> and uh, hopefully we don't have to hear Jeremy complain anymore <laughs> after this. Um, we'll find something else to complain about, but that's a, that's about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little shout out uh, to uh, Tyler, uh, the guy on my Discord, my friend, also my cousin's friend, uh, for giving us a tip on uh trying to have more structured things instead of going everywhere i really appreciate it i sent it to jeremy and i think jeremy did you appreciate that comment yeah i sent him a shock emoji yeah he's in a shot because I, he, I didn't know what to say it's just like wow someone actually gave me constructive feedback like, yeah say good or bad and this is what we wanted too right yeah this is what we wanted and we appreciate it uh tyler if you're watching this video comment below and let us know how we actually did on this episode i think it was more um constructive of what we did um 
and I mean, we literally as we sat down, I literally told Jeremy what we're doing. So it's not like we sat down for hours and try to pick out what we're doing. I don't like that kind of process because I feel like it, uh, it, it doesn't bring genuine with it. Yeah, it drains you too. Yeah. But I do want a whiteboard though. Yeah, whiteboard would be nice. But let us know <laughs> if we did good on this episode. If you're not Tyler, if anybody else wants to give us constructive feedback, we're more than willing to accept and see what we can do about that. Um, hopefully you guys have had a, a good start of the new year. Uh, I hope your New Year's resolutions, if you guys made them, um, impact you and stay with you throughout the whole year. That's correct. Um, I'm Wesley. My name is Jeremy, and this year's theme is redesign, rebuild, and reclaim. What he said. All right, guys. I'll see y'all later. Bye.